So, which way is correct? This way or this way? Long answer short, it doesn't matter. Now, if somebody wants to argue with you, you can send this video. However, if you are wondering why my carabiner is a little broken here, or you are that person who wants to argue, let me entertain you. Because oh boy, oh boy, that was not that easy to figure out. What happened? Well, the rope is still here. The grigri is still here. Oh my God. Now, a bit of context for those who don't understand what's the big deal about this. This is Black Diamond Gridlock. It's a belay carabiner. And we have a lot of similar carabiners already on the market, like this one, for example. And these carabiners usually have a little loop at the bottom, which you clip your harness to, and it prevents the carabiner from twisting in some less than optimal orientation and cross-loading it. Now I have a bunch of these belay carabiners and on all of them you clip your harness to the smaller loop while you clip your belay device to the bigger loop. However, with Black Diamond Gridlock you will see people clipping Grigri to the smaller loop. So why is that? Well, first of all, the manual is really confusing. It shows tube-style device connected to the bigger loop, it shows Grigri connected to the smaller loop, and then it has a warning if you cross-load the device. But it's a warning, it's not a skull, it's not a big no-no. So the question is, is it okay to connect Grigri to the bigger loop? So to unravel this mystery, I thought the best is actually to write to Black Diamond and ask them to give us recommendations. And I got a response. This is a question for Petzl. They recommended Grigri to be connected at the small loop of the carabiner. And then they sent me a link to Petzl website, which kinda doesn't make any sense. I was like, there is no way Petzl would put a competitor product on their website and talk about how to use it. Well, I went to that link, of course there was nothing, and just in case I decided to write to Petzl. <laughs> And the answer was, Petzl does not specify if Grigri should be attached to upper or lower basket. They also included that we should be aware of pear-shaped carabiners because they have a tendency to rotate and become poorly positioned. Which means that pear-shaped carabiners, like this one, connected to Grigri are more likely to cross-load during belaying compared to D-shaped carabiners. They kind of don't let the Grigri to go to that side that easily, which I can confirm from my own experience. So good to know, but it doesn't solve our Black Diamond gridlock mystery. So I went back to talk to Black Diamond. And this time the response was, as you can see, we do not specifically recommend against a Grigri loaded into a larger loop, as there is no safety issues in doing so. So, it seems that there is no official no, no, no to do this. But where is all of this confusion coming from then? Well, let me say that this carabiner is really, really old design. I found an article dating like 10 years ago, which pointed to an issue of doing this, where in case of the cross load, the Grigri can get jammed. So since I wanted to go deeper into this story, I reached out to my friend Ryan from YouTube channel How Not To to help me to investigate it. Here's a black diamond gridlock screw gate carabiner. And a cool feature about this is if you put it on a belay loop, you open that gate one more time and it keeps it in the back of the carabiner. But ironically, if you put the grigri on there and you lock it, then if your climber goes slack for a little bit and then loads it, Oh no, it's cross-loaded, ironically. And it's actually cross-loaded pretty badly. So we're going to test this to see how bad it really is. An interesting side note is if you put the carabiner facing the other way, and so the black plate is towards the back, it actually does not get stuck in any circumstance. Few things to note. If you take any other belay carabiner, properly designed, it is impossible to make your belay device jam in this way. It always slides out on load. 
And second thing, even if you manage to crossload this carabiner, it should still hold up to 7 kN of force. And from my testing, I've never seen forces higher than 2 kN to the blare on really, really hard falls. So it's more than 3 times safety ratio. However, if you get your Grigri jammed in here, the Grigri is being twisted as it wants to go back in its normal position. So, I'm not sure if Grigri is gonna like that. Let's find out. Oh, that's stuck. Some real stuck stuff right here. For science. Oh. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, wow. You can see it separating the plate right there. Well, that's not good for the Grigri. So the rope is slipping around three, and that's usually pretty common. The plate is definitely, hmm, it's looser. Let's see if we can make this fail. What happened? Well, the rope is still here. The Grigri's still here. Oh my God. That's a very interesting result. Oh, that's gold. Wow, huh, you're telling me this carabiner still functions. It even looks, I mean, it's scraped up a little bit, but wow. Wow. So it just jacks the plates apart at seven kilonewtons if it's not slipping at five or two and a half. Oh, wow. But that was the journey we just went on. So although in real life scenarios it's really hard to generate forces anywhere close to that, however Grigri started suffering at around 5 kN or maybe even less, it didn't really like that twisting action. So take this as a warning. And this mystery doesn't end here because we received this picture from the follower of us. And he was replying down, gets a few meters down. Uh, readjusts on the rope on the wall and we hear this loud ping and like a he, he bumps down a uh, small piece of metal comes flying off the wall which landed close to us so we found it and when he got down to the bottom you can see that the nose is broken off in the carabiner's defense even though the, the nose did explode um still functional ish <laughs> in, there's a pin and there's a gate <laughs> it's, it's not he didn't fall to his death so i mean he had a backup on anyway are you still using it no, definitely not. <laughs> no. You just like shred your belay loop or something. It's, it's just like super sharp on the inside edge. How hard do you think the load was? Not... It, it, he, he... There, was there any slack in the system or...? No, not really. Uh, dude weighs about 80, 75 maybe kilos. We were repelling. It was a dynamic rope he was repelling on. I can imagine it could be two things. I thought initially it was probably what you suggested, um, which is... That's, I think. Yeah. So since the forces were really low on this incident, it raises a lot of questions. The first theory we had was that maybe Grigri was twisting against that little nose and broke it. However, from Ryan experiments, as you saw, it's probably really unlikely. So another potential cause could have been improper loading of the carabiner on the harness. The gridlock is supposed to look like this with the belay loop in the back of the carabiner. But if you don't put it back there and it's not locked, it's not a problem. But if it is locked, we'll find out how much of a problem that really is. Make sure I see what happened first. Oh, it jumped. Oh. It jumped. God damn it. So, since Ryan ran out of black diamond carabiners to break, welcome to my testing lab, where my setup is an actual harness with very thick belay loop. I'm hoping that it's not gonna slip through the nose like in Ryan's case. And since I don't have a fancy machine to break things, I'm gonna drop weights. And for those who worry about my safety constantly, I don't 
even know how to put this on. That was 2.4 kilonewtons and it slipped through. The interesting part of it, this gap is super, super tiny compared to all of this belay loop. Maybe this part of metal also flexes a little bit. So now I'm gonna put the thickest part of the harness on the nose. Let's see what happens. Well, let's try again. Okay, I'm trying something else this time to see how this will go. I think I broke it. Yep, I broke the nose. I felt it shot into my nipple. And this part is so so sharp and your belay loop is falling through this super sharp edge i think i wrecked my harness a little bit and after analyzing the forces you can see that the pin broke around here around one and a half kilonewtons only and then the peak of the force was when the harness hit the bottom of the carabiner so if you load this carabiner incorrectly this little piece is not hard to break and it leaves a very very sharp edge which goes over your belay loop now the story doesn't end here we tested on another belay device to see what happens. Oh, damn. Okay, 12.6 kilonews and it smells like gunpowder right now. It broke my belay device. That's crazy. And this thing was super strong in our belay device break test video. It was torquing on the, the two lobes, I think. Wow. All right, so we broke a bunch of carabiners and belaying devices, and I kind of had to find another gridlock to make this outro. So this is a little future me. So back to original question, is it okay to do this where the grigri is connected to the bigger loop? Well, if you want a little bit safer, you can clip the carabiner other way around. And as Ryan discovered, this is less likely to get jammed in here. However, it's a little bit more complicated to clip everything this way if you are right-handed. So for left-handed people, this is probably even better. Now, if you want the safest option, of course, you can clip the Grigri to the smaller loop. However, it's such a big journey to do that, that I'm really not a fan of this. Who came up with idea to wiggle it in there in that small loop and then do all of this shenanigan? So I kind of think that Black Diamond could have improved a thing or two in this design, but it was really fun to collaborate collaborate with Ryan and push this carabiner to its limits. So if you want to see more videos like that, consider supporting us or just write a comment for the algorithm that helps a lot as well. And enjoy climbing! Safer.